so the aftermath of my first time sharing a lot of personal information um, has been quite a, uh, a difficult one, I should say. Um, I came publicly and said a lot of secrets that I've been hiding about my relationships, about my mental well-being, about my self-confidence, my lack of focus, sometimes my lack of drive, my lack of purpose. And for me to share that with the world, it's really difficult, but also we are dealing with a pandemic. So obviously, one's mental health is not at its peak, or it is peak, I should say. But I wanted to follow up by saying that I don't regret. And I know sometimes when the tea has been spilt, it burns. I don't know who it burnt. It may have burnt me. It may come back to haunt me. But I'm also about authenticity. But what the heck is being authentic? I listen to all these foolish podcasts. You know, these positive mental health ones that tells you, oh, be real. Be your authentic. Be your true self. Be real. Live in your truth. What does that mean? Is this some American bumbo jumbo that tells us to live in our truth? What is our truth? Sometimes our, our truth is to hide from the truth because the truth flipping hurts. And if I am to focus on something that I have been hiding, it is a breakup. And a breakup hurts. And I think men and women alike have to be honest with how we process breakups. Some of us choose to get involved in other relationships. Um, we jump into the crutches of someone else to make us feel better. I can't say that I haven't done that. I can't. I can't say that when my present or previous relationships haven't ended, I haven't felt so worthless that I wanted another man to come and make me feel great about myself. I cannot say that I haven't phoned an ex who had the ability to make me feel good at that time. I can't say that I've gone on a particular app, definitely not plenty of fish, I'm not about that life, but gone on an app and needed my ego to feel good. Because rejection, even if you ended the relationship, the fact that he didn't run you down and try to get you back in the way that you wanted to get back, or even not get back with him. Sometimes you don't even want to get back with the dude, you know, or the girl. But it's about their efforts and their energies towards you. We all want this fairy tale that he's running you down and telling you how great and fantastic you are. But sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes it's about your ego has been bruised. And I know my ego was bruised in the last time, the time before, and the time before that. How did I recover? Yep, I did this whole destiny's child business in it um independent all my ladies you know i was all up in it and i was my girls was around me and saying yeah you know you got this you can do this but you know when you lie down in the bed in the night time and it's you one especially if that's a bed that you used to share with someone else now it's you one you know what i did i changed my bed I changed my mattress, I changed my bed sheet them, I changed the wallpaper, I changed the paint on my walls. I took three bunches of sage and I banner fire on the whole place. But sometimes that doesn't heal your heart. <laughs> Let's be very real because sometimes you've been bruised, you've been damaged, you've been affected so much that weeks, months, relationships later... Some things that that person said to you resonates still and it hurts. Sometimes your ego was so bruised, it got beat up, licked down one mad, mad, mad domestic Jackie Chan style. And you can't recover from that. Maybe because you be partially believe it, you know. I know a lot of mine has to do with my physical. I have always been a big girl. Some days proudly so some days i am the baddest big bitch on road you can't tell me miss fluffy nothing you can't tell me about my kangaroo pouch or my saggy tits you can't tell me nothing 
Because when I put on my clothes and put on that good bra and that good Brazilian girdle, I am hotty, hotty, mctotty. But I was asked to do an exercise, to take off my clothes, to stand in front of the mirror and to look at myself and to ask myself, do you like what you see? And I can honestly say that I don't. I like myself in clothes, but I definitely don't like myself naked. And that for me is being authentic and that being true. Not falling in love with the naked, but being able to say, I don't like what I see. But the fact is, can I change it? Yeah. I can go gym. Can I? Nah. Can't really afford the gym. I have a child on my own. I'm a single mother. Am I motivated by home videos? No, I'm not. So let's be real. The size I am, this one six, sixteen, sometimes at 18, on a good day, depending on the stretch of the material of 14, is going to stay like this. And what being authentic or true is, is living in that truth that this is what God has bestowed upon you. And this is what you need to work with. And you need to make that work. Easier said than done, though. Because there are days that I can't even look myself in the mirror. There are days when I do not even feel like I am worthy, that I'm not attractive. Not only am I a big girl, but I'm a dark-skinned girl. And I've got to tell you, only in the last probably five years we became popular, you know. Because before then, we were not popular. I've been to auditions where I was told that I didn't look right, my hair wasn't, you know the three C curl or two C curl. If you don't know what the curls are, it's about, you know, how how Europeanized your curl is. If it's, you know, a little bit wavy, not so wavy. Like I know mine is knocking on the door of Quinta Kente. If I don't have this creamy crack relaxer in my head every six to eight weeks, it's a hot mess. I look like someone's grandma or someone's auntie. I know I have to, (laughs) I, I say I have to. Could I go natural? Yeah, I can. Is that the look that I like? No. Do I diss anybody that is natural? Kind of, if you're not using the Brazilian blow dry or one of them things, because I'm not a natural girl. Nothing about me is natural. Is that because I don't love myself? Maybe. I like lashes, you know. I like going to the baddest chicks in London. Mink Lashes XOXO, shout you out. For my lashes. I like to get my eyebrows waxed and tinted by Sung Ling down the road. She hooks me up. I like to wear a- acrylic nails. You know, I went on a date since I separated and the guy said to me, you know, you're one of them black girls, you know, that's not, you know, Afrocentric, that's not like natural. This time you'd think he's some rasta man that's like eating idol. This time we was nyamming down the pork. But anyway, he said to me, you know, you're not one of them. No, his word was, I'm not one of those conscious black girls. What does that mean? Does that mean that I'm less black? And the rest. No, I'm dark skinned. So I'm properly like my melanin is 30. You know, it's it's all up in there. It's in every crevice. My inner thighs are darker than the rest, you know, <laughs> like seriously. When I'm doing makeup samples, I gotta go for d- deep dark. Not just dark, but deep dark. So how dare you tell me that I'm not conscious because my hair isn't natural? He said, You're one of those Barbie black girls. Don't get it twisted. I felt a bit gassed for a minute, you know. I felt gassed that someone had compared me to Barbie because Barbie is the pinnacle of little waist, big tits, hips. But I know what he meant. He meant that I was a bit fake because I had all these additions. And I asked myself, why do you have these additions? Because they make me feel good. Or is it that it makes me look like something that I'm not? And that's the journey that I'm on. And when you're in a relationship and it breaks up, You do think to yourself, is it because I didn't look like the way that he wanted me to look? Because not all people get married or stay in relationships for the right reasons. Some people are in relationships because it's convenient. The rent in London is expensive. Do you know how easy it is to just be in a relationship and get it cut by half? Now I'm doing everything on my own. It's hard out here. 
the end of the month comes and me I struggle because everything is on me. Every single car payment, rent, council tax, electricity, everything is on me. I've had to sacrifice so much because it's one wage. Everybody says, oh, but you're on a good wage. You're qualified. You've got masters. You've got all sorts. Yeah, I do. But if my wage was, sh- if the bills were shared, my wage would be even better. I could be buying those bundles on, not Ali, but, you know, one of them sites or from the chick in the shop and say, oh, yeah, I want 27 inches. Right now, i got to deal with the 10 inches that's on my head top. That's what I've got to do. So I ask myself again, why is it that you feel that you need those bundles? Is it that you want to be white? No, definitely not. Nothing wrong with white girls. Love you. Big up all my white friends. I am happy in my blackness. I feel that I'm conscious. I know where I've come from. I know that the colour of the skin doesn't define me. Has it impacted me? Yes. Has it stopped me getting roles? Yes. Has it stopped me getting maybe some of the lighty dudes I like that don't like dark skin girls? Yes. I know there's not a lot of guys that like... If you like dark skin girls, let me tell you, it's a niche market, you know. You really like dark skin girls. Honestly, if you like a dark skin girl, that's your flavor. That's you. That's like if you say, my only drink is Cavossier. You're a Cavossier drinker then. You're not really going to mess with the Henny because it's not right for you. You're not going to dress with the vodka because you say, I don't like the white stuff. I only like the brown stuff. That's how it is. And so you have to ask yourself, what is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. But as a woman who's only sometimes somebody's niche or someone's second choice or because I can cook, I can maintain a house, I'm not really out there like that, I'm not skinning out myself online. You know, I was told by many I'm wifey material. What the hell is wifey material? Is it because I'm not hoeing myself? Because I can be a hoe. Like, there's a reason why God has made me this size, this colour, with this hair. Because I truly believe that the inner hoe within me is just waiting to be unleashed if she was in a size 10 body. I would be certified on OnlyFans with 16,000 followers. I I am a porn star in the making in in my head. There's a reason why I look the way that I look. Because I think I would have hoed it out the road. Because there's money to be made, let's be real. It's the hoes that have the bags, the shoes. I'm not saying I'm not saying just because you've got bags and shoes, you're a hoe. But let's be real. Sometimes your assets has helped you to encourage that dude to buy it or encourage the man in the shop to give you the little discount. Sometimes we have to just accept what we've got in it. And that's what I had to do. I had to make a decision that no matter what breakup I'm facing, no matter what hardship I'm facing, that this, what's standing in front of me, naked in the mirror, is the authentic and true version of myself. Being authentic or true or real doesn't mean that I have to share my whole business on social media. But it is my choice to also. It's my choice to have limited friends. It's my choice to have a whole leap of associates. It's my choice even to have people on my social media that's not here for me. I know the likes, the views, especially the likes, come from people that are not really for me. And they're waiting for me to fail or waiting for me to flip up or waiting for my ex to phone me after a podcast and say, what the rast you talk about my business for? You're waiting for it, innit? You're waiting. And it may or may not happen because people are unpredictable, innit? But at the same time, I have a small circle, my family, as in friends that are family, that love me. And that's all that matters. I have a daughter who loves me. And that's all that matters. And I have to look out for number one. And that's what we all have to do. We have to stop worrying, you know. We have to stop sit down worrying about what Tracy, what Bernadette, what Alicia is doing what she's saying, what she's got, what she's not got, what your ex has done, what he should have done, where he should have gone, and the upgrade or not that he may have, the girl, the new girl that he... I don't have time for it, you know? When my exes have moved on, I've been 
10 pictures. Send Instagram profiles of their new things. I don't want to see it, you know. Not only do I know that it's not good for my soul, because that comparison thing is the devil. But sometimes people are moving on. It's not about you. It's about them. Sometimes it's about their need, what they needed to fulfill. You might have just been that. You know, they say you've got reason, season or lifetime. Sometimes you might have just been that season. You filled that gap for them when they needed you the most. I believe, as I said, I was someone's mum. That's what they needed at the time. They needed someone to mother them and give them that security blanket. And the saying goes, you feed Marga Dog and they turn back and bite you. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's what happened to me. I don't know. Maybe people come into my life with no good intentions, with ill intentions. But I need to wise up. I need to see these intentions and I need to make better choices in who I'm bringing into my world. You know, I have to say, one thing I didn't do when I got engaged and I advocate for any woman that is nearing this part of their journey in their relationships. We are so busy peacocking ourselves, showing out, showing that we are the best people for the role that we are wifey material girlfriend material we ain't no shy chicks we can cook we can clean we can sex we can do everything but you know what we're not doing we are not auditioning these people for the role of husbands partners long terms we're so busy trying to prove to others that we're you know We're worthy, we're worthy, we're worthy. We are worthy of having someone great. We need to think about what we're offering, what they're offering to the table, not just what we can offer. We're so busy trying to be the baddest bitch and show them that I'm the baddest bitch. You should want me. No, why should I want you? What are you bringing to this party? It's like them dudes or girls that come to parties with no bottle. You know, it clearly says bring a bottle. But you go to the shop and they, they're the ones that come with the E&J or like some mixed liqueur or some foolishness like that. Something, something stupid. You know, like that's what some people in relationships come with. Absolutely nothing or something cheap. Because if they really wanted you and wanted you to work, you know, they would stop and buy and bring the nicest bottle because they want to impress you some people don't come to your party to impress you they just come to get away with it you know like borderline behavior i'm here in it i showed up we should be grateful that you showed up you showed up and you showed out why why should i be grateful why should i be grateful that you come to i come to see you in it really should i be grateful should i why should I be grateful? Because I know my company is A+. plus. They don't call me five star for nothing. So really and truly, you, my friend, should be coming to me, bringing not only drink, but food to the table. Because look at me, you know I like food. So how dare you come to this party without a full buffet? You need to be coming in this bitch with a full buffet. Be sitting there thinking she's shitting shit in it. Because <laughs> I am. I'm gassing myself. Do you think when I meet a new man, I'm going to be saying that? Oh, you better come to me with a buffet. No, I'm not. I'm going to be so gassed that this cute dude likes me. Little old me or big old me. Why can't I take this mindset, this bad bitch mentality, and take it and put it into real life? That's all I long to do. I long to put it into real life. I long to be the person of my dreams in the reality. The person that feels confident, oozes sexuality, oozes everything. Because I put on a facade. Some people say, oh, but you're so confident. I really am not. I fake it to make it 82.3% of the time. That's what I do. And that's the only way I know how to get by, by faking it. Because if not... I'll get into this dirty hole and I will not be able to get out. Sometimes you do have to fake it to make it. You have to put things on the gram to like kind of boost yourself and make people think you're okay. 
And, you know, then you play your Jesse J and realise, oh, it's okay not to be okay. And you have your little cry. But I'm not a crier. I don't cry. Something's wrong with my tear duct. To get me to cry, I'm hurt, you know. I'm really hurt. And breakups hurt me. But I, you know what, another thing I worry about? Crying and not stopping. Sometimes I don't let myself cry. Because I'm not only crying for that one breakup. I'm crying for the breakups before. Some girls can cry on tap. I ain't great at it. I'm not really actually great at sharing my emotions. My friends tell me all the time, you know, you never tell us when something's wrong. You just get on with it. You're just so tough. You know, you're so strong. You're such a superwoman. I'm really not, you know. I just know how to fake it. I just know how to get on and cry inside. I think I cry inside a lot more than I cry outside. I need to learn the way to express myself. Um out of a podcast as well as on a podcast but I want to find someone that wants to help me to express someone says oh why are you looking for a man to help you express you able to do it yourself but reality is can we because if I could have done it myself I'm 30 plus do you think I would have not done it already I would have done it already I would have found the way I am looking for a partner to bring the best out in me to be my biggest cheerleader, to be my biggest fan, to tolerate me on the days that I cannot tolerate myself, to love me on the days that I cannot love myself. You know, RuPaul says, oh, if you don't love yourself, you can't love nobody else. Somebody else can love me even on the days that I don't love myself. And that's what I want. I want to not give up on love. Just because love has failed me, and I say love has failed me, I haven't failed love. Because I went into my last marriage with my whole heart. I gave it my entire soul. But it wasn't good enough for the person who received it. So now I have to find a more suitable receiver. I have to now think of it not as my failings, but to say, well, it wasn't for them. But it was and could be for someone else. Is there something wrong with me because my marriage didn't succeed? Is there something wrong with me because my marriage failed? Maybe. Maybe there's a bit of work to be done. You know, there's some days, and it's not just a marriage thing or whatever. Some days, I go to bed. And I don't want to wake up tomorrow. And it sounds dramatic. But some days I feel overwhelmed. Some days I feel like it's all too much. That it's on top. Someone say, you're so selfish though. You've got a child. How dare you say that? But sometimes a child is not enough. Children are not enough. To make you feel motivated, desired, loved cared for because they come with their own stuff their own needs they take 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 from you especially if you haven't got children sometimes your child is the only one that keeps you going imagine what my life would be like without a child and I am not an advocate for suicide um I know how devastating those are left behind and I couldn't imagine my daughter living knowing that and I know how difficult that is And I hate to think that she thinks she's not worth living for because she is. And that's why I'm here today, still fighting that good old fight. Some days I think it must be easier not to do this, you know. Not to to, to wake up tomorrow and have to face this groundhog again. To face getting up, fighting with her to put on her school clothes. Walking down the road, dropping her to school, rushing back to the work or the office or whatever dealing with the idiot them at work that I can't I can't cope with because you know I'm, I manage so I manage people and that's the worst part of management and then thinking about what to eat then looking at the bank balance and then some idiots calling me about money that I owe and then I'm like oh put another you know go in the phone book do not answer you know how many do not answers or don't call don't call back I've got no answer like I've got codes for these people the postman comes and you hear 
through the door and you're like, oh, Ross, what is that now? You see the pile, you don't even open it, you hide it, you, you can't face it. Then you pick them up, then they're wanty, wanty. Oh, mom, can you buy me this? Mom, can you buy me this? Mom, what's with it? I don't like that. I'm not eating that. No, I'm not tidying my room. No. Oh, my gosh. Then you got to fight to get them in the bar. You're too dirty. Da, 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 da. It's a fight. And then fight to sleep. And then at 10 o'clock, you finally sit down. And you think, do I want to do all of this tomorrow? And I don't actually think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling that way some days. But it's about making sure that you don't feel like that the next day. You don't feel like that the day after that and the day after that. And I'm not going to lie, I've been on antidepressants, I've been on anti-anxiety, I've been on CBD, I've, I've tried a lot of things. But sometimes it's faith, sometimes you just need to pray, sometimes you just need to say joy will come in the morning. And know that next year, the year after, won't always look like this and be motivated for change. And that's all I hold on to that tomorrow doesn't have to look like today and my heart won't always feel so broken my spirit will not feel always as downtrodden that my mind will not always feel rejected that I will be uplifted I'll be motivated I'll be encouraged I'll carry on I will inspire, I will encourage, I will love, I will be loved, I will care and be cared for, I will get as much as I have given. And I say all of that to say this, that when you break up with someone, you almost break up with yourself. You break up with who you thought you were in that relationship. You break up with the person that they thought you were or the person that they wanted you to be. You break up with the dream, the, the ways that you thought your life would look in five, ten years or even one year, what your holiday next year with that person looked like. You break up with so many things that you had planned. And then where do you leave you? How do you build back from that break? And does it depend on how deep the break was? How deep you are broken? Are you broken to the point that it's going to take years to rebuild? Are you broken to the point that it's going to take a penis to make you feel better? You have to ask yourself, what is it going to take to build me back? And I didn't know. I truly didn't know what it was going to be like to have to rebuild this version of myself, you know, I am Cam 5 Star 2.3.5.0, you know? Who is this version? Is this version going to be broken as well? Is she mended with some super glue? Or is she mended with, uh, what's that other one? You know, that monkey gorilla glue, that's it. Or is it a whole new, starting from scratch, ghost, put the pottery together, like let's build something completely different. That's what I want. I almost wanted to be someone brand new. I didn't want to be like that person. I even struggle to look at pictures of myself when I was that person. Because now, two years on, I don't even know who she was. And sometimes, as I said, I look at the pictures and I see the sadness in her face. And I think to myself, you know, why didn't you decide better? Why didn't you make better choices? Why didn't you want better for yourself? Why were you prepared to settle? Why was your feelings not valid enough? Why was your feelings not worth making difficult decisions for? And I don't know how how deep your break is or how deep you're broken, but I know that I am not fully prepared. And I know that it will take not friends, not family, but me. Would ha- it's gonna, and I don't know what it's gonna take. If I'm honest with you, I sit here and I, I ramble my thoughts, and I think, how will I know when I am fixed? Am I fixed when I don't have the regret, don't have the pain, don't have the hurt? Mm, I don't know. Do you know? 
do you know are you fixed just because you're now in a new relationship have you been fixed from the heart and the heartbreak from the one that broke your heart sometimes I think about relationship that I was in when I was hmm, I was probably about say say 15 years ago I still think about him because he hurt me I've been able to get recent closure from him and that's another thing see this closure business is closure necessary what does closure look like does closure look like an apology does closure look like him saying that you know i did you wrong i treated you badly or her sorry a bit sexist isn't it what does that look like and why do we need it why do we care because the fuck if he says oh yeah i hurt you who cares really no one does he don't because it could just be words more words that you needed not to hear so do we need closure these are questions that I'm asking myself and I'm asking you as you listen to this. Why is it that we're waiting, waiting to find the validation of someone else in order to reach our healing or our closure or mend the broken bits? Why can't we mend them ourselves? I guess throughout the time of these podcasts, we're going to revisit so many of these things. But it's really important for me to actually just sit down and absorb and take on board what I feel, what I think, how I think and and how it, it helps me to meet new people, um, interview them, um, share my story with you. I need you to know that I'm a real person that feels real things. I hurt, you know. I'm really sensitive, actually. I come across as this big, bold, bullshit black girl from South London. But truth is, I'm a softie, you know. Like, don't get interested, I'll fuck you up. But I'm a softie as well and you know girls need love too hashtag no drake it's it's crazy that my our hearts are tender and our hearts are really um more fragile than we want to imagine i hope you find the glue that mends your broken bits because i'm still trying to find mine until next time